That's my 2022-23 testimony. Thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah, because he is good. Hallelujah, he is good. In spite of it all, he has been good, good, and good earth. And that's not even a word, but good earth. Hallelujah, he is a good God. So I praise the Lord. Welcome Kingdom Life. Happy New Year to everybody that's in the house. We made it. Hallelujah. We made it through the night. Didn't no bullets come through our house. My, that was a miracle in itself. That was a miracle in itself that the angels of the Lord were encamped about our homes. Because I'm telling you, it was like a war zone. I'm like, where did they get that kind of weapon from? Where? My goodness, but I thank the Lord. He protected us and kept us, and we made it through, and, and here we are. Hallelujah to God be the glory. To God be the glory. So good to see all of you that are here, and just blessing the Lord. We have some that are they just sick. They couldn't even make it to church today. Hit with some kind of bug after another bug after another bug. So, so we thank God that we're here and we're praying for them that the hand of the Lord would touch them and and reverse everything that Amen. have attacked their bodies. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord for His Word. Hallelujah! He's got a word for us this morning. A word that just blessed my soul. It's not a long word. It's just a good word. And you know what? I thank the Lord so much that that I have grown in the Lord and that you all have grown in the Lord so much that it don't take God to say a whole lot. <laughs> we don't need to say a whole lot. He ain't got to give us paragraphs and, and pages and all of that. He can just say one thing. On. And that one thing can be confirmation yeah. to your spirit. Yeah. It can be just the one word that you yeah. needed to hear from the Lord. So he has a, a word for us this morning. Uh, we're going to look at, at Isaiah uh, chapter 7. Uh, verse 11 which is not a foreign scripture to us and then Isaiah 45 18 through 19 so and we're going to read it from the New Living Translation and Isaiah 7 11 says ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation Ahaz make it as difficult as you want as high as heaven or as deep as the places of the dead Come on, just ask the Lord for a sign. Amen. Glory to God. We, we we were given this scripture even some months ago when he said, ask me for anything. Ask me for something big. I don't care how big it is. And this text is saying that just make it difficult. Make it as difficult as you want. How many of you know only God can say that to you? Only God can say, give me a challenge. Only God can say, let me prove to you how great I am, how powerful I am. Let me prove that to you. Isaiah 45, 18, 19 says, for the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and earth, and he put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. Sometimes we just need that reminder. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in uh, some dark corner so no one can understand what I mean. And I did not tell the people of Israel to ask me for something I did not plan to give. Come on, ain't that good right there? I did not tell the people of Israel to ask me for something I did not plan to give. I, the Lord, speak only what is right and true. When I read that, that portion of scripture, it took me all the way back to when the Lord was leveling up my prayer life. And when Holy Spirit would say, ask for this. And, and, and Holy Spirit was saying to me, ask for this because this is what he'll give you if you ask for it. And so the scripture says, I'm not, I didn't tell them to ask me for something that I don't plan to give to them. I want to use for a, a, a topic, a subject, or whatever you want to call it today, to encourage the people of the Lord and say to you what Holy Spirit said to me, he's still going to do it. Amen. He, he's still going yeah. to do it. 
Holy Spirit said, let the people of God know this morning that it's not too late. It's, it's not too big and it's not too hard. Whatever it is that still has not shown up in your life. Sister Angela, the Lord said, it's not too late. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it for you. I'm still going to do it. It's not too big. It's not too hard. Sister Regina, the Lord is saying, I'm still going to do it. I'm still, don't let it go. Don't release it. Don't say just how the calendar changed and the, and the numbers change. Don't think that meant, well, I just didn't get it. He says, ask the Lord your God for a sign. This is a sign for some of you this morning that the Lord is saying, I'm confirming it in your spirit. I'm still going to do it. That thing that you believe in the Lord for, that promotion that you believe in the Lord for, that house that you believe in the Lord for, the salvation of the loved ones that you are believing the Lord for, the turn around and things that you're believing the Lord for, the Lord is saying to tell you this morning that I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. I was I was in my office last week and I was going through my uh, journal and it was on, it, well it wasn't last week actually, it was on December 16th and I, was, and I had my journal out and I started kind of going through it for the year, just kind of you know how you go back to January and let's see where we are now. And as I was looking back over the year, I, I wasn't looking at, at just at the things that we have accomplished because we know even as this house, as a church, we accomplished a lot. We did a lot in, in, in 2022. We did so much, we wore the people out. We we did so much. We just we were just so tired, you know, just like, my God, we did a lot because we it was nonstop. The whole year, it seemed like it was just nonstop, one thing after another, one thing after another, one thing after another. So I was going through it, and I was just looking at the different projects that we did and the different things that we did. But but I didn't just, on that list, wasn't just the things that got done, but it was the things that didn't get done. It, it was like, you know how you do the checklist, and you say, well, this is what I plan to do this year. And you check off what you did, but then you got to look at what you didn't do or, or what didn't get done. And so those were some of the things that were on the list. And, and can I tell you this? I don't know how it is for you, but I know how it is for me. That sometimes when you look at things that did not get done, sometimes when you look at things that did not get done, and depending on the size of it, the little things sometimes don't bother us so much, but it's the big stuff. And you say, man, I'm, I, I'm still in the, this, this ain't changed. Come on, this this didn't happen, and, and and so when I sometimes when you look at that, you you know, even the stuff he told you to ask for, and you close out the year, and you don't have it. See, he told us to ask, and so I'm going over the list, and I'm looking at something that I didn't get. I'm looking at something that I didn't get that he told me to ask for. Come on. And I'm looking at it, and, and I hear Holy Spirit say to me, check your perspective. Before you go too far with the fact that you didn't get it, check your perspective on how you're looking at it. And, and he was telling me this. He said, he said, Pastor Karen, before we go any further, before you let your mind go any further with this, before you let your emotions Come on, get all tangled up in this. Before you do that, check your perspective because the devil would have you to see it as if it never will happen. Come on, it, it, like it's over. The devil will, will, will put thoughts in your mind as if God lied. Come on. As if God was taunting you. As if God was tempting you. Come on. That's how the devil works. That's how the devil talks. And, and, and so he will put thoughts in your mind as if you miss God. Come on. You must have missed God. That must not have been God. Because if it was God, then you would have it. But it's still on the list. So you must have missed God somewhere. This was coming out of your flesh. This was coming out of a desire that wasn't God's desire for you. The devil would have you to think as if you messed up. And that's why it didn't happen. Come on. As if you messed up. And, and, and you didn't follow everything to the T. You didn't obey God fully. Come on. You, you messed up. 
and that's why it didn't happen. The devil will have you think that what you asked for was simply too big for God to do. It, it was just too big for God to do. It was in the wrong timing for God to do it. It, it. it was just not for you. That's how the devil will have you thinking if you don't check your perspective. Yeah. And so the Lord was saying to me, check your perspective. Yeah. And then I began to say, okay, Lord, keep talking. Just keep talking. And so God said to me, that's not the case. He said, I'm still going to do it. Come on, I'm still going to do it. I told you to ask me for something big. I told you to let it be difficult. And, and I think for some of the people in the house, you didn't go as far as you should have gone with your ask. And, and you, you still put it within the framework of, I'm going to ask for this, and yes, it is big, but if I don't get it, right. just in case, Come on, just in case I don't get it, I'll be able to survive the disappointment. Come on, it won't rob me of my faith. My faith won't be weakened if I don't get it. So I'm going to keep it within the parameters of what my faith can withstand. Wow. Uh. Wow. And God is saying, I told you, ask me for something real big. Make it as difficult as you want to make it. Make it as difficult as you want to make it. Make it so difficult that it's even hard for you to believe that I can do it or will do it. That's how difficult I want you to make it. That's how difficult I want you to make it. And the Lord is saying to the people today that I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to get it done. Ask me for a sign. Ask me for a confirmation. Can I tell you, God will do exactly what you ask him for. The scripture says in Isaiah 45, it says in verse 18, for the Lord is God. And I think we, we have a hard time keeping that in our minds that the Lord is God and what God means and how big God is and what God did. And we could just remember that he created the universe. Yeah. And everything that he spoke to is still doing what he told it to do. That by itself ought to, ought, to, ought to stir up something in you, come on, to believe in this God that we serve. Sometimes I am amazed. I go back and I think if you just read in the word and you look at what he commanded the sun to do and what he commanded the moon to do and what he commanded the stars to do and none of them have stopped doing what he commanded them to do regardless of how chaotic the earth is regardless of how chaotic, come on, things are going on in the earth. Everything he commanded to do from the beginning is still doing it. And no man can stop it from doing what he commanded it to do. So if the man, if man can stop it, our God is God. Come on. He wants to do those big things for you. He wants to do those enormous things for you. He wants to prove to you just how powerful he is. He said, for well, the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and the earth. And he put everything in place. How many of you know the moon ain't moved? Come on, the stars have not left their place where God put them. You're not going to see stars uh, lighting up. the. We ain't going to walk on no stars. They're not falling from the sky. They're staying in place where he put them. The rivers are in place where he put them. The oceans are in place. The word says he set a boundary. If they cannot cross that boundary, if they have not, Cross the boundary. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. This lets me know that even while I'm down here on this earth, God's desire for me is that I have peace in my life, that I have order in my life, that I have order in my family, that I have order in the things that pertain to my life. He, he, he says, I didn't plan for you to live a chaotic life and have chaos going on all the time. How many of you know that in the, in, in, in the holiday times, we can experience some of the most chaotic times with just our family. 
Come on, we're just now families where some people just can't get together, where you can't invite everybody, where you got to divide everything up and somebody going to be over here because they can't get along with this one over here. And God says, that's not how I plan for your life to be, not an empty, chaotic place. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I am the Lord and there is no other. That is why he instructs us to ask him. Because only he can bring the peace that we need. Only he can make crooked paths straight. Only he can bring water in desert places. Only the Lord can. We got some stuff only the Lord can do. And that's why he's saying, ask me. Only I can change the heart. Only I can change the mind. My God, Sister, Sister uh, Pastor the Prophet Deneen and I were talking about certain things that were near and dear to our heart. Yes. People that are near and dear to our heart. That we desire to see the Lord do the work. Because we recognize that only the Lord can do this. Only the Lord can change the mind. Only the Lord can change the perspective. Only the Lord can wipe away the past and give us a new direction and all of that. Only the Lord can do that. And what he is encouraging us with in his word today is he is God. And he changes now. Come on, he changes now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is God. He is God. And he's still going to do it. He's still going to do it. I, I went to an event on Friday. Prophet Deneen and I went to an event on Friday that was uh, about being on TV, really. Uh, somebody is, is starting up a Christian TV station, and, and we were invited to the event to know how to become a part of it and, and, and having a TV show, you know, those sorts of things. And, and, and he even said, if you write plays, if you've got plays, if you got them recorded and they're professionally done, we will put them on the TV show for free. And we'll just play it for free. I knew I was in the right place. Come on, I knew I was in the right place. This was uh, by private invitation. Let me tell you, he is God. And he can do anything. He can do everything, right? And, and, and so they were, they were talking about this, and, and I left them knowing that God was still going to do it. Woo! Come on, that God was still going to do it. I leaned over to Prophet Deneen when we were there. I said, girl, we were meant to be in this place. I almost didn't go. I almost didn't go because when I saw a picture of where it was, there were steps that you had to climb to to get into the building. And there was a part of me that said, girl, you know steps ain't your friend. You know those knees, and I almost didn't go. But then I said, you know what? Lord, I trust you. Can I tell you I'm so happy I was in the room? Can I tell you I'm so happy that I that we pressed our way through? And, and so and so last night, can somebody say he's still gonna do it? So last night I was still flipping through the journal that I had been flipping through earlier in the month when the Lord gave me the scripture. And I was looking at my journal and I saw an entry from 2021. And the entry spoke about me having my own TV show. That was the entry in the journal. And, and it said, I don't know how this will ever happen. I don't know how it'll ever happen. Why? Because I don't know anybody. Come on. I don't, I don't even know how it works. I don't know who you contact. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how this will ever happen. But how many of you know that the Lord says, that if you delight yourself in him, that he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart. And I was so tickled when I looked in that journal entry. I had to take my pen and I wrote on there December 30th, come on, 2022. It has come to pass. Come on, it has come to pass. God is showing me I have not forgotten. That's what he want to tell you guys this morning. 
I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten what I've called you to. I have not forgotten what I promised you. I have not forgotten what I said I will do for you. All you got to do is keep believing that I am God. When it looks like it's just no way. When you have forgotten what he said. When you have released it. He will bring it back at his appointed time. At his appointed time, he will bring it back. Say he's still going to do it. He's still going to do it. Scripture says in verse 19, I publicly proclaim bold promises. I publicly do it. Oh, my God. How many of you have publicly received the word from the Lord? How many of you that called you up and they prophesied over you in public and said, thus saith the Lord? How many of you have heard from the Lord and the Lord have said to you, you know how we do, we decree and we declare. Come on, we decree and we declare. We decree every single Sunday over our offering, and we decree over this building what's going to happen. And we say, open up. Come on. We say, that, that's publicly declaring what the Lord is going to do. How many of you, come on, stand in your mirror and have said to yourself, Karen, come on, you're going to be. Dion, you're going to be. Come on, you're speaking publicly and saying it out loud. How many of you have taken the word of the Lord and you have read it out loud and you have declared it out loud and you have decreed it out loud over your business, over your family over your health, over your money come on, and the Lord is saying that I publicly proclaim bold promises, every time you read out of the word of the Lord, every time you speak it over your family, over yourself you are publicly, boldly proclaiming what the Lord has said he says I do not whisper obscurities in some dark Connor. Do you know the Lord does not have to back down from what he says? He does not have to back down from any promise that he made. He doesn't have to whisper it to you in a corner just in case. It doesn't happen. No. He's big and he's bad and he's bold. And he says I'll say it out loud. Come on. I don't have to get in a corner and hide and act like I just might not. This might be too hard for me. He said ask me something big. Stand up, decree and declare. This is what I'm believing the Lord for. I'm believing him for it. I'm believing him for it. I have a vision of a house in my mind. Come on, and it's big and it's bad, baby. It is big and it's bad. And as the Lord continues to show me who he has called me to be and where he has taken me to be, now I see I need a studio in my house. Come on, so it's a big house. Come on, it's a bad house. Glory to God. Because the will of the Lord will be done in my life. Kingdom expansion will happen in my life for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord. And so the Lord is saying this to the people of God this morning as we begin this new year that you would expand your vision. Come on, because he can do it and he will do it. That you will begin to see bigger for yourself. And you will begin to see better for yourself. On the very first day of this year, let this be the less that you will ever be. Let this be the less that you will ever be. And the less that you will ever have. Come on. That every day from this day forward, you are increasing. You are expanding. You are growing. You are going up. You are leveling up in your life, in your vision, in your abilities to do what the Lord has called you to do. He says, I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner so no one can understand what I mean. I love the way God makes himself clear. Come on. I love the way he makes himself clear. When he speaks to you. You know, I always tell you guys, he will teach you the way you learn. Yeah. Come on. He will speak to you in the way that you understand. He will use the language that is clear to you. I love the way God will do. He will take the profession that you work in and he will speak to you that way. So that he will use the language and the lingo and all of that that goes along with the profession that you in to make himself clear to you. To make his word clear to you. He will use your situations and he will say it to you in a way that is so clear. The Bible says that a fool came missing. 
Come on, a fool can't miss it. When God got a message that he's trying to get to you, when he's trying to get you to understand it, that little baby over in that corner will be able to get it when God is trying to get a message to him. And the old man that's sitting over in that corner, God will break it down in a way that he can understand it, that he will know exactly what God is saying and exactly what God wants to do and exactly how God is going to do it. Why? Because he's God. Come on, he made you. He made your brain. He made your understanding. Come on. He made your eyes so you can see it in the way that he meant for you to see it in the way that he meant for you to get it. He's still going to do it. He's still going to do it. He said, and I did not tell the people of Israel to ask me for something that I did not plan to give. He said, tell kingdom life. I did not tell the people of kingdom life to ask me for something. But you don't know why you asked for that. You just got in your prayer mode and you praying and the next thing you know something pops out of your mouth and you it'll stop you it'll stop you and say I don't know I don't know why it's for that come on I, I don't know why I said that sometimes you can be praying and you and, and a person come on you'll start praying for a person and it'll stop you and you'll say I don't know why I don't know why I prayed for that you will start praying about a situation that you didn't even know needed prayer for and you say I don't know why I pray for that. But this I do know. I know that when the Holy Spirit prays to you, come on, and he prays about a person or he prays about a thing or he prays about a situation, come on, that means that God is going to do it. Come on. That means that God used you to stand in the gap. Come on. That you're the messenger. Come on here in prayer to, for God to do what God wants to do in that situation, in your life, in the life of somebody else. Say he's still going to do it. He's still going to do it. It may look like it's not happening. It may look like the time is over. It may look like it's too late. But God says, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. He says, I, the Lord, speak only to what is right and what is true. I speak only to what is right and what is true. He says, He says, tell the people, you may not see it now, but God is still working on it. Come on, he's still working on it. The Lord of God, he has not forgotten. I love that about him. He has not forgotten. You can, you can go to him again. He'll say, I know. I haven't forgotten. I, I remember. I know what I said. Because you know we can't worry we're, we're, we can worry him. Come on, we can worry him sometimes. Glory to God. And he say, I know, I know. Calm down. Come on, calm, just calm down. I got it. I'm in control. I am God. I am the Lord. The Lord says to tell you that God is working on it, and you will see it this year. Come on, you will see it this year. Come on. We're going to see the TV show this year. I'm standing on the Lord. I believe in the Lord. And we're going to see it this year. Come on. We're going to see it this year. I believe we're going to see Where Is My Inheritance as a movie this year. I believe that. I stand on that. I have faith for that. I believe the Lord for that in the mighty name of Jesus. Why do I believe the Lord for that? Because on yesterday, I was leaving the church and I recognized that I had not received a word from the Lord for 2023. Come on. I had not been pressing in for it actually. I have I have what I practiced in 2022. My new level with the Lord. What I practiced in 2022 was to stay close to God. What I practiced in 22 was to stay in communication with the Holy Spirit. That we just on a regular. Just on a regular all the time. I, I, what I began to practice in 2022 was, was silence. Was turning off TVs and music and radio and all of that. And riding in the car with nothing on to practice. Come on. Uh, uh, communicating with the Holy Spirit respectfully respectfully because I know what it feels like when I'm trying to talk to somebody and they're texting somebody else 
I know what it feels like to try to communicate with somebody and they distracted with the TV. I know what it feels like when I'm trying to communicate with somebody and their attention is everywhere else. So I purposely, for my own self, this is no self-righteous talk or nothing like this. This was for my own self, number one, to respect Holy Spirit, number two, not to miss a message that God is trying to get to me. How many of you know that you talked to somebody that was distracted and you told them something important and when it happened, they didn't know because they missed it because they were distracted when you were talking to them? How many of you know that you could bring them something you say, but I told you about that and then you say, when? Because you were distracted by something else. So I've been practicing. Come on, that's my new practice. I'm practicing keeping Holy Spirit and keeping engaged in conversation and with the feelings of Holy Spirit and, this, and all of that. And so I'm growing in this. I'm learning in this. But baby, I'm going to tell you something. It takes a lot of the pressure off. It takes a lot of the pressure off when you got to deliver the word of the Lord. It takes a lot of pressure off when you got to give somebody a word. It takes a lot of pressure off. Come on. When the enemy is coming with an attack, it takes a lot of pressure off because Holy Spirit said, hold on, wait. Come on, it takes a lot of pressure off. So I had been practicing that. So when I got in my car and I was leaving the church on yesterday and I'm just riding up the road and I hold Holy Spirit say so clearly. He said, Pastor Karen, the year of 2023 is the year of the merge. He said, it's the year of the merge. And then he began to talk to me and tell me how important it would be for the body of Christ. Come on, he said, you're going to see businesses merging. You're going to see ministries merging. Come on, you're going to see a, a relationship, to different things you're going to see the merge. And he said to me, he says, and the reason for it is for, for the purpose of success, for the purpose of survival, for the purpose of protection. Come on, for the purpose of provision. It's going to become necessary, necessary, necessary that we learn to merge. And then he said to me, he said, now look, our scripture says, God, I need a sign. I need a sign, right? He said, I gave you a sign on Friday night. Because on Friday night, you met with these people, come on, that's going to show you how to be on TV. That they're going to show you how to create a movie. They're going to show you. He said, that was your sign. You got to merge with some people. Come on. You're going to have to decide that it's not going to be just us. You're going to have to understand that, that, that you got something that they need and they got something that you need. And you're going to have to be trusting me to merge you with the right people. And I began to think about that because there's a ministry that the Lord hooked us up with. He hooked me up with, which means he hooked us up with. Come on, back in 2022 and this ministry, we need one another. And, and so I already know what we're going to merge with. We're merging with them now because I'm meeting with them and we're sharing things and we're helping one another. God says, I've been giving you a sign. I've been giving you a sign. And this is what you will see. And the Lord said to me, he said, so be ready. He says that you're going to have to walk in humility. It takes humility to admit that you need some help. It takes humility to admit we can't do this by ourselves. It takes humility to say this is not just our assignment. This is somebody else's assignment. And it's time for the body of Christ, come on, to come together and say, how can I help you? And we say, how can we help you? Come on, to accomplish, because what are we doing? We're kingdom building. It's for the kingdom of God. It's for the kingdom of God. So he said to me, he said, this will be the year of the merge. And he took me to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, which says two people can accomplish more than twice as much as one. They get a better return for their labor. How many of us are looking for a return for our labor? Come on. We're tired of working for free. We want to see a return for our labor. There are some things that you do that could bring you a great return for your labor if you hook up with the right people. You just don't know how valuable the gift is that God has given you. You don't know how valuable you are. He says they will get a better return for their labor. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But people who are alone 
when they fall or in real trouble. And on a cold night, two under the same blanket can gain warmth from each other. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. He's still going to do it. He's sending help. Come on. And, and he's sending us help and he's causing us to be help for somebody. That's, that's what we're going to see this year. That's how you're going to see the increase. That's how you're going to see the, the advancement. This is the year of the merge. God is going to connect you with the right people, the right sources, the right everything to get his promises to you and to get his will done on the earth. Say amen. amen. Say amen for the word of the Lord. Glory and hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your direction. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your help. We thank you, God, for what you are doing. And we submit ourselves to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we submit our wills to you. We yield to you right now, God. We know that in this year of the merge that we will encounter new things and new people that we are not used to even. But God, give us ears to hear. Hallelujah. Give us eyes to see. Help us, Lord, to be flexible and not to be so rigid in the name of Jesus that we will be able to be vessels useful in your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for bringing us this far and we thank you for what we are entering into. We thank you that you will do everything that you said you would do and that there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing too big, too hard, or too difficult for you. And so God, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we say thank you in advance. We say thank you for what you're doing. We say thank you. Hallelujah for bringing it to pass. We say thank you for the big things, the grand things, the awesome things that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.